there, good looking. Stick around for this amazing bone building workout. Great for people with osteoporosis, osteopenia, or if you just want to take care of your bone health while building some good looking muscle while we're at it. Now listen, you need some tools for this workout because this workout is not lame, okay? You need a booty band, a chair, and then a couple of pairs of dumbbells. Now I have a pair of heavy, moderate, light, but I know that not everybody has a variety of dumbbells. So at least grab one pair of dumbbells. And if you've got two or three, grab those as well. Lace up your runners, let's go get started. Hello there, hey, welcome. I'm PJ from fitnesswithpj.com and hey, I help women over the age of 40 reclaim the tush of their 20s. Or in this workout, the bone density of your 20s. If that interests you, click that subscribe button. I would love to keep working with you. How about we warm up? As we warm up, I'll chat about the workout and then we will get right into it. So let's start with feet apart, abs engaged. So all that means is you're drawing your belly button in towards your spine and we'll warm up the shoulders with some big arm circles. Arm circles are going backwards, really exaggerate the range of motion. So we're we'll starting this workout out with a glute activation series because the hips are super important in terms of core stabilization. We'll also be performing some one-legged moves, so we'll get some balance involved and some core. We'll move into a traditional strength training program to help build the bone density and then finish off with an osteo-friendly core routine. It's going to be awesome. You're going to love it. Trainers promise. Last three. Two, one, open up now and close. So we're just opening up the shoulders, spreading across the chest and then closing and pulling the shoulder blades apart. Now together and apart, perfect. If you're new to me and my workouts, it is so awesome to have you here. And if you have been to my workouts before, a big mwah to you for your support. Last three, two, and one, okay. Starting out with that glute activation series because this is a part of the warm up as well. Taking the booty band, and if you don't own a booty band, no worries, you'll still get benefit from this. However, you will get more benefit with the booty band. So after this workout is done, check down below in the description where there's a link that'll take you to the page where I have all the gear that I use and grab yourself a booty band. They're inexpensive and as I said, adds a barrel of fun. Now, if you notice, I shuffled over to the side. We've got some side walks to do. Your booty band is around the ankles. We're taking a step out, softness in the knees, and then in. Keeping tension on that booty band, making sure the knees don't cave in. Deal? Perfect. 30 seconds are on the clock. Let's give it a try. Ready? Nice and tall. Pull that belly button in towards the spine. Now step it. Good. And see if you can go three to four step out, and then we'll take it to the other way. So you're going to feel the hips immediately and we're working into glute med here as well as glutes themselves keep those knees soft though Woo. warming up the hips time all right i'm going to pause the timer grab your chair or if you've got a wall close by so we simply need it for balance Take the booty band underneath the right foot, anchoring it, and then have the left leg on top, taking a knee up. So we'll start with feet together, and then now let's drive that left knee up towards the chest and slowly lower. Working quad and hip flexor here, stabilizing leg is soft. Now, if you're feeling confident with this, let go of your chair. So we work the balance, and once we work balance, core muscles fire up a little bit harder too. But if you're all over the place, hold on to the chair or your wall, because I would rather you get this move than trying to stick it with your balance. Now you'll feel the other leg, definitely, because it's stabilizing us. Whew. Time. All right, we've got a 10 second transition. So booty band's just over your laces, okay? Now let's take that other knee, pull that belly button in towards your spine, and lift. If you're trying it without holding on to the wall or your chair, focus your stare on something stationary. That'll help with your balance. As I said, getting into that quadricep, hip flexor area, 
and then all these stabilizing muscles here on this other leg. Time. Booty band comes above the knees. Once again, if you don't have one, no worries. All right. We will lean away from this outside leg from the chair and then think of a fire hydrant, how a dog goes to the bathroom with fire hydrant. That's kind of what we're mimicking. And we're lifting up and getting that glute med working here and then the other glute med stabilizing. When the timer goes, other side, and then we'll start our strength program. Woo! You feel those hips yet? Time. All right, you can bring your chair to the other side. Once again, I like a little lean away from the leg that I'm training. Bend that leg completely, keep it bent. Other leg is bent slightly, stabilizing. Lift up. It's almost like you've got a string on the outside of the knee and that string is being pulled straight up from the ceiling. Good. So these are really great activation exercises in addition to strengthening exercises. I find this outer hip muscle weak in a lot of people that I work with and it can cause havoc to the low back, hips, and the knees. Time. All right. If you want, grab your sip of water because we are going to get right into that first strength routine. And I want you to grab a chair. Make sure you have your chair close by and a pair of heavy dumbbells. All right, we start off with a chest press. Actually, we're on the ground for these three next moves in which we'll work chest, shoulders, triceps, core muscles, and glutes and hamstrings. Heavy dumbbells are needed for our first exercise. Then you'll want your chair, or you can also use the edge of your couch or edge of your coffee table close by for a bridge, and we'll flip over for a plank. Three rounds, 45 seconds are on the clock. I'll give you a quick demo of exercise one, chest press. Elbows lined up with the shoulders and then slide them in slightly. Wrists over elbows. You can lift your hips up if you want a little bit more into the glutes. And we press the dumbbells up and lower down. Back of the arms hit your mat each time. Now for reference, I'm using 20s. We, these are big muscles and there's also many muscles assisting in this exercise. So if you have a pair of heavier ones, I want you to give it a try. All right, get set up. Bum up if you'd like. Now you want those elbows in front of the shoulders, okay? Press up, arms straight, dumbbells touch center above the chest and lower down. Breathe with this movement. Exhale as you're pushing the dumbbells away from you. Slow and controlled. Elbows straighten with every repetition, so we're moving through that full range of motion. If you're in a glute bridge with me, press the, through those heels, lift those hips a little higher. As we lower the dumbbells down to the ground, slow and controlled. Time, all right. Now I'm moving my chair in. Knees bent, feet on the edge of your chair. Drive the hips up and slowly lower down. They call this a glute bridge, or in our case, feet elevated glute bridge. You can also place a dumbbell on the hips to add more resistance. When we lower down, it's slow and controlled, and then as soon as you feel the hips or the bum hit your mat, boom, push them back up again. So we don't want to rest down there. You can rest when the workout's done. <laughs> You're all mine in the meantime. Now the muscles you'll feel are many, but you'll most likely experience most of it in the hamstrings and the glutes. And that's exactly where I want you to feel it. When the timer goes, time right there. Roll on over into a plank. We've got a couple options with our plank. On the knees or full plank off of the knees. You choose what's gonna work for you. And then if you're able to, for intermediate advanced people, take your left hand, tap in front of you like you've got a dumbbell or something to tap, a water bottle, and then tap, alternate taps. Good. So if you do have a water bottle, shift it over so you're using that to reach while we keep the hips quiet. And again, from the knees or the toes. So those are our moves. 
back to chest press when our timer goes. Three rounds, so these are called sets. Each round's called a set. We have three sets. Time. Get yourself situated. Grab those dumbbells. Heels close to the bum. Lift the bum up if you'd like. Elbows in front of the shoulders. Go, press up. Now, a lot of people prefer single set training when they work out. <laughs> and I applaud people that just work out. I am bravo, I'm happy that you showed up. But if we are looking for results, single set or just doing one round of each exercise is not going to get where you want to go. Not going to help you get where you want to go. We need multiple sets, so we fatigue the muscle, and therefore, afterwards, the muscle rebuilds itself stronger and, as well, increases our bone density. So, three rounds for our strength routine for that reason. I want you to see results with this workout. Time. Heels up on your chair, couch, coffee table. Pull the abdominals in, drive the hips up, lower down. Now see if you can lower down with the bum just barely touching your ground. So we've got constant tension into the glutes and hammies for the whole round. If your hamstrings are cramping, that's just your body telling you that your glutes aren't firing up and the hamstrings are trying to do all the work. If that's you, I want you to get rid of the chair, have feet on the ground close to the hips, and just do a feet on ground bridge, okay? Rolling over for a plank when the timer goes. Time. All right, so remember your options for your plank, knees or toes. I want you to find what's gonna push your envelope and then stick it there for the full 45 seconds, go. If you're able to, tap out in front of you. How's that head? Is it in line with the spine or have you let it drop forward? Slight chin tuck. Feet are apart so we can keep the hips quiet. is definitely getting into the abs and the shoulders. Come on, hang in there at home. We're almost there. Breathe. Time, whoo. Okay, final round, chest press. Grab those dumbbells, heels close to the bum, elbows in front of the shoulders, hips up if you'd like. Drive the dumbbells up, touch center above the chest, lower back down nice and slow and breathe while you're doing all this. <laughs> I know you think breathing would be instinctual, but sometimes it's not. We hold our breath when we're learning a new task. So I just want you to get a handle on your breath. Don't worry about when to breathe, inhale, exhale, when, what, just breathe. Squeeze the glutes if you're in that bridge with me. Push through those heels. We've got your chest muscles, time, front shoulder and triceps working on that guy. All right, chair close by. Bottoms of the feet on the edge of your chair or couch. Drive the hips up. Remember, we're not letting the bum go all the way down. Keeping constant tension on those glutes and hamstrings. Once again, if the hamstrings are cramping, feet are on the ground for you, but keep the heels close to the bum. The further out the heels are, the more the hamstrings will fire up. We want to get you to engage your glutes more here. Time, plank. Knees or toes, 
Hang with me the whole time though, all right? So hold and tap out if you'd like. The tap's optional. It obviously increases the intensity because we're balancing on one shoulder, one arm, but it's the plank I'm most concerned about. Training into the deep core here, your transverse. Also getting spinal extensors fired up, glutes. Make sure that neck is in line with the spine. Don't let the head drop forward. Less than 45 seconds away from a water break. Woo, time, woo hoo. All right, nicely done. Standing for our next series. We still have 45 seconds on the clock. Working back muscles and biceps and your thighs. We need a wall to do a wall sit. Okay, so this wall isn't, <laughs> this, this is actually a fireplace with just a piece of plywood over top of it and we painted it. Um, so if I lean against that, I'm probably gonna go right through it and yeah, my husband will probably divorce me. So, um, <laughs> I'm going to go to the very edge. I'll, I'll try and figure it out, but I want you to find a wall that you can sit upright to do some bicep curls while we work your squat pattern. Our first exercise is a band pull. Grab that booty band. If you don't have a booty band, you may have a regular type of tubing with the handles at the end. Grab that. We have the arms up above. Okay. And this is me zooming in. My hands are like that. Pressing into the band. From this position, I'll anchor with one hand while I draw the elbow down on the other side. Alternating pulls, 45 seconds. Secondary exercise will be against that wall with a pair of dumbbells for bicep curls. So let's get ourselves set up. Find some dumbbells that are gonna work for you. I'm going to try 12, 12 pounds. Okay, you ready? Awesome, here we go. Now this guy here, it's important that you root yourself. Feet apart, draw the belly button in, great. Timer's on, here we go. Drive down, elbow coming down to the outside of the body. Now as you draw that elbow down, think about pulling that shoulder blade into your back pocket. Now there's no doubt the other arm's working too because we're using that to anchor the tubing. If you have a TRX, you could do a TRX pull up instead of this drill too. In fact, I really do recommend if you do have osteoporosis, um, a TRX, because it will help you do a lot of exercises that traditionally in strength training, we need to bend over to do. TRX, we can keep you upright in that spine of yours neutral. Time, all right, wall sit with a bicep curl. So. Get yourself in, let's hope I don't go through the fireplace here. Palms facing away, knees and ankles lined up, curl the hands up to the shoulders and slowly release down. Now your thighs are parallel to the floor as best you can. You can come up a little higher to make it a little easier. If you're down with me with thighs parallel, make sure those knees aren't pushing past the toe box. So ideally the ankles and the knees are lined up. So you have a 90 degree bend in ankle, knee and hip. While we do this barrel of fun, we do some bicep curls to work into the arm muscles. You should feel that in the thighs pretty darn quickly. And yep, we have three rounds of these too. Lucky us. Woo! Time. Oh, all right. Grab that tubing. Hands on the outside, anchor it. Abs engaged, pull down. Breathe. So there's now research out saying that using tubing and bands will help improve your bone density. Previous to that, the research wasn't showing that it was positive, as positive as it was with dumbbells and doing jumping type motions. So this is great because tubing is a really inexpensive tool and it doesn't take a lot of space in your home. So that was good news for that study.
Now you'll feel your arms time. There's no doubt about it on that one, but we are also working the big muscles down the sides of your back, your lats. Wall sit, grab those dumbbells, ankles and knees lined up, arms under shoulders, curl up and slowly release. So the gold standard for building bone density is jumping, <laughs> okay? That will stimulate bone growth. However, not all of us love to jump, at which point, or maybe you do have full-on osteoporosis and jumping's going to put you at higher risk for breaking a bone. So the next would be dumbbells, okay, strength training. And then tubing, and then body weight movements. Like walking, or plank motions, whoo, low impact cardio time. All right, last round. Get yourself set up, abs engaged, and pull down. Now, unfortunately, what doesn't stimulate bone production are non-weight bearing activities like swimming, bike riding, elliptical trainer, stairmaster, rower. Those are all great cardio activities and you'll definitely get um, Benefits for cardiovascular health, calorie burning too, but it won't help with building bone density. Blech, easy for me to say. So jumping, dumbbells, tubing, body weight movements. <laughs> That's what works. Time, woo! All right, use the legs to pick those dumbbells up, not your back. Palms facing away, ankles and knees lined up. Now, I have a great video. Well, <laughs> I think it's a great video. <laughs> so it's totally self-proclaimed great video on exercises to avoid when you have osteoporosis and what to sub in instead. On the final 10 seconds of this video, so this means you have to watch this to the very, very end. I will link that up. So all you have to do is click on it so you can watch that. It's a fit tip, it's not a workout. And then I also have another two workouts specific for bone health. But in all seriousness, if you watch the video that I did up on exercises to avoid and what to sub in, you can pretty much do any of the workouts on the channel, just remembering the exercise time subs that I give you. All right, Whew. one more, go. Pretty much the most common offender is, you keep going, okay, is rounding the spine forward. So we try to ask people to avoid that. The problem with osteoporosis is you don't really feel that you have it, right? They don't have symptoms. It's like high blood pressure. You don't really feel like you have any symptoms of this until <laughs> something occurs, like you bend over to pick something up and yeah, you break a rib or crack a vertebrae. And that's quite common, unfortunately. So when we're doing exercises, we wanna think about risk versus benefit. So anything that has you rounding the spine forward, the risk is far outweighs the benefit. All right, final wall sit. And that goes with a lot of yoga poses too. So here we go, ready and curl. Now we're moving on to a new series of movements after this. Take a peek, make sure that the ankles and knees are lined up. Again, it's a 90 degree bend of ankle, knee and hip. Back of the head against your wall, shoulders against your wall. This is a knee friendly squat pattern. So there should be no pain in the knees. It's definitely gonna be <laughs> some discomfort in the muscles above the knees, but hey, we can live with that, right? Time, whoo, all right, nicely done. Okay, oops, I made a mark on the wall. Whoopsies, grab a sip of water. Lighter dumbbells are needed for our next series of moves, working into the smaller muscles of the body. Full cans, I'm using a pair of 10 pound dumbbells, 
we're working into the shoulders. So if you're a beginner, you might want to start with um, cans of food, three or five pounds. Once again, you want to root yourself. Okay, knees are soft, feet are apart. Pull that belly button in towards the spine. We're starting with the hands in front of the body. Thumbs are pointed up. So you'll actually, I'm gonna ask you to sort of push your, hold your thumbs so they're pointed up on the dumbbell. All right, both arms are coming up like the letter V, only to shoulder height. Here we go, round one, we have two rounds. Lower down slowly. Working into shoulders here. And then the great thing is when we're working dumbbells and standing in particular, we have a lot of core activation. Time. Grab onto one dumbbell. I'm gonna grab onto my 20. I prefer to do this half kneeling. You can also do this seated. Arms are straight up. Drop the dumbbell post behind the head and straighten. Tricep extensions. So you can stand with a staggered stance. Seat, seat, <laughs> sit in your chair or join me in half kneeling if that feels okay on your knee. Our next exercise requires no tools and we'll be standing. Time, Woo. all right, stationary skater. I want you to mirror me, so it's my left, your right. Stabilize with the other leg. Take this right leg of yours, tap out and in. All of your weight is on this leg though. We're using the glute med on this outer hip. We're using that to help stabilize while we extend this leg out and in. Also working balance, so that means now we've got some more core activated. We've sunk ourselves down into a bit of a quarter of a squat, so you'll feel your quads too and your glutes. But the main mover here is that glute med. It's stabilizing time as we extend the leg out and in. All right, so let's get set up on the other side. So quarter squat, all my weight's now on my left, your right, tap out and in. Good job. So we've just got one more round of these new moves I showed you. Then we move on to our osteo-friendly core routine. You should feel that hip. <laughs> Not a lot of weight on this leg. It's the toe just simply tapping, tapping in. Great job. Time, light dumbbells, full cans coming up. Use those legs to get your dumbbells, not your back. Thumbs pointed up, shoulders away from the earlobes, and lift, slowly lower. Root yourself, knees are soft, belly button's drawn in towards the spine. Making a big letter V, coming back down to front of the body. Time. One dumbbell only. Again, I'm doing this half kneeling. You choose standing seated or with me. Arms are up. Dumbbell post goes behind the head and straighten the arms fully. Working behind the upper arm here. I love working triceps, don't you? <laughs> Time. All right. Stationary skater. So, sink into that quarter squat. Outside leg taps, in and out. Everything on this leg and this side of the body is very quiet. Great job. Your 
Less than a minute away from water break. Ha <laughs> ha. Time. Woo. That gets burny, doesn't it? All right, here we go. Always feels better when you give those burning muscles a whack. <laughs> Drop down and go. Once again, focus your stare on something stationary if you're having a hard time with your balance. Very little weight on this leg tapping out and in. Quiet on this stabilizing side. Quarter squat, bums pushing out a bit. Neutral spine. Breathe. Almost there. Time. Shake it out. Nicely done. All right, grab a sip of water. You can put your tools away because you don't need anything for the core workout. Okay, let's head down onto the mats. We have, what is it? One, two, three, four, five different, I had to count the workouts just written off to the side. <laughs> five different movement patterns, all related to the core, one round only, 40 seconds on the clock. We start out with a bird dog, wrists under shoulders, knees apart underneath the hips. Now here's the important cue is draw the belly button in towards the spine without moving the hips. So we don't want a pelvic tilt here. From this position, let's extend the right leg level with our ground and then the opposite arm thumb up, lower down, other side. The entire time keeping that belly button drawn in towards the spine. Not lifting the legs so high that we'll arch the low back. Reaching at fingertips to toes on that mid part of the repetition. Time. Lower onto your belly. That bothers your low back. You can roll your mat up so that you've got some height in the hips. Bring the arms out so they're level with the shoulders and then turn your thumbs up to your sh sh ceiling. Chins tucked in, lift the arms up and slowly lower. Tuck your toes into the ground so that you're neutralizing the pelvis. Tighten the muscles up in the glutes so you don't feel your low back. Working your posture muscles here into the mid back area. Once again, you're leading with the thumbs and keeping them rotated up. Anchor yourself in the pelvis. Slowly lower the arms, time. Take yourself back into that plank. We can be on the knees or off the knees. If you're off the knees, slowly drop one knee and tap the mat, and then the other knee and tap the mat. If you're on your knee, slowly lift one leg and extend the knee up, and lift the other knee up. You choose. Keep those hips quiet. Elbows under the shoulders. Palms flat and are resting on your mat. And as best you can, see if you can line the wrists and the elbows up. Neck in line with the spine. Time. On to one side. Elbow under shoulder. You have a couple of options here. Knees bent. Lift the hip up. Straighten the front leg, or the top leg, pardon me, lift it up and hold. Or stack the feet, both legs off the ground. Now take this other arm, extend it up. You've got top wrist and shoulder aligned both shoulders aligned and then bottom elbow aligned neck is long lift up through the hips working into the obliques 40 seconds and then the other side Woo. time Woo -hoo. All right, let's get set up. So again, you've got those three levels that you can do. Knees stacked, top leg extended, or both legs. Elbows under shoulders, lift the hip up. Now take that top arm, reach it up, and then take a peek. We want it above that shoulder, remember, not behind. 
bottom shoulder and ear away from each other. This is our last exercise. Time, nicely done. On your back for me. Knees are bent, left leg straight up, press the heel up towards your ceiling. If you're able to, interlace the hands behind the thigh or just grab onto the thigh. Now lift the head up, slide the chin in, back of the neck is long, lengthening into the hamstrings. So this is the best time to stretch after you've done your workout when the muscles are warm. We can get more length out of them. Bend that left leg, ankle crosses over the thigh. Now this may be enough of a stretch for you in this left hip. If so, hang out here. You want a bit more, lift that right foot off your mat, hands go behind that right thigh. Again, be aware you want that back of the neck long. And if you're unable to, place a pillow or roll your mat up just to pop your head up a little bit. So stretches after the workout. Never want to stretch or hold these sort of stretches before workout. They actually don't prepare your muscles or your joints for the activity that you're about to do. And in fact, they can actually impede on performance and set you up for injury. So where a lot of people think that holding stretches before workout they're doing their body some good, they're not. We want dynamic stretches at the beginning, warm-ups that are slow, controlled, you're moving the body, and then we hold what we call static stretches here at the end. Release that left leg, extend the right one up, same thing, think about pressing that heel up towards your ceiling. So that's just a taste of the many different exercises that you can do if you've been diagnosed with osteoporosis or the beginnings of. Don't think that this is the end all, okay? It's just <laughs> what happens as we get older and we need to learn how to work around things and once we do, a whole new world opens up. Now bend this leg, pull in. So don't throw in the towel. Mind you, I don't think you have if you're doing this workout. <laughs> so bravo. There are workarounds to every exercise that perhaps you've been told not to do. And there are other exercises that you can do that will benefit you more now than perhaps in your 20s and 30s. Like, for instance, strength training. Release, feet hip width apart, arms extended, lined up with your shoulders and palms are facing up. Drop your knees to your left, turn your gaze to your right and hold. I understand though that getting a diagnosis of osteoporosis or the beginnings of sucks. Getting a diagnosis of anything <laughs> sucks. But I want you to hang in there. If you need any help or assistance, simply drop a comment down below. Let's bring the knees to the other side. I read all my comments and get back to everybody, especially if you have subscribed to the channel or if you are supporting me on Patreon. And if you are supporting me on Patreon, you can drop me a direct message on that platform and you'll get in my inbox a lot quicker. If you're not familiar with Patreon, it's due to the people there that we can keep these workouts going on YouTube. So if you can support even just a little bit a month, that would be awesome. There's a link down in the description box. And back to center. Now let's bring the knees and feet together. Hands can just rest on the belly. Open up the knees now. Bring the insoles of your feet touching, stretching into the adductors. And 
you just let yourself relax. Bring the legs together, feet apart. Left hand on the belly, right hand on the chest. If you'd like, you can close your eyes for this part. Take a deep breath in through your nose. Feel your left hand, your belly lift first. And then the right. Exhale through the mouth. Feeling that left hand drop first and then the right. Get the breath deep into the belly, expanding the rib cage, maybe even feeling that breath go all the way around into the back and spine. Exhale. Two more breaths. Arms down by your side, palms open. Allow your breath just to flow in and out through the nose now. Open your eyes. Put a big smile on your face. And bravo, you did it. Thank you so much for joining me on this series. Once again, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. I would love to keep working with you. Have yourself a great rest of your day. Bye.